Hi, my name is Scott Scher. I am the Waltz Manager for the Near Earth Network. The Near Earth Network is a collection of ground stations around the world for supporting mainly NASA missions. The Near Earth Network supports about 40 NASA missions. I work at Wallops Flight Facility, which is on the east coast of Virginia. And at Wallops, we have a 24 by 7 global monitoring control center. And uh, we also have a number of engineers, which uh, keep the network going day to day. Today, I'll be talking about digital video broadcast satellite second generation for X band and K band for achieving roughly three times the typical data rate, which is a really uh, quite an achievement. And um, at um, part of my job at for the Near Earth Network is to evolve the network to meet new missions, particularly CubeSats and SmallSats. So I, I have come up with a strategy for better supporting the small satellite community. And I'm interested to hear your feedback, your comments, and your questions. So please feel free to contact me. Because we're all, the New York Network is always trying to better serve the small satellite community. It's, uh, it's, that could be uh, quite the future for NASA spacecraft. The New York Network is striving to achieve the highest data rate from the longest distance from Earth for the least size and weight and power on the spacecraft and for the least cost. And that's even more important for CubeSats and SmallSats because they are more constrained to size, weight, and power on the spacecraft. Another reason why it's important for CubeSats and SmallSats is because of constellations. Many CubeSats are precursor to uh, larger constellations of spacecraft. And uh, any network of ground stations can support a higher number of spacecraft if the number of minutes per day per spacecraft is reduced. And so high data rates can help achieve that. High data rates can also achieve higher science, but with constellations also for a mother-daughter constellation where the mother is communicating with Earth, the mother CubeSat needs a higher data rate. And so EVBS2 can help achieve these higher data rates. Prior to working for the New York Network, I supported the National Science Foundation CubeSat program, mainly, mainly helping CubeSat teams integrate their spacecraft to launch vehicles. We also help CubeSat teams with engineering as required and uh, use of a UHF ultra high frequency CubeSat ground station at Wallops Flight Facility which achieved three megabits per second, a minus three megabits per second. Here is a picture of the Near Earth Network. The Near Earth Network has a scope of four times the distance of the moon or about a million miles from Earth out to the launch points L1 and L2. It, it consists of mostly 11 meter class X-band and S-band received and S-band transmit ground stations. There are a number of ground stations at the North Pole and near the South Pole, some in mid-latitude to cover all different types of orbits. Uh, the number of stations at a particular site is driven by the number of spacecraft that need to be simultaneously tracked over that site. And uh, the New York Network has one 18-meter KA band, S-band, Dish at White Sands, New Mexico, which is mainly for lunar communication. The New York Network's in the process of adding a number of tri band stations, KE band receive, X band receive, S band receive, and S band transmit, particularly to support future K band missions. One such mission is the NISAR mission, a synthetic aperture radar launching next year, and that mission will need four gigabits per second from space. Uh, Yen Wang is an engineer who worked at Goddard Space Flight Center, and Wallace is a part of Goddard Space Flight Center. He did the heavy lifting for the paper and this presentation. Uh, last year, he did studies on S-bands, and he demonstrated that 15 megabits per second, or roughly three times the data rate, 
can be achieved over a five megahertz S-band link uh, bandwidth. And, uh, and then he did an analysis this, for this paper for X-band and K-band. He planned to do testing at the Wolf Flight Facility test bed. However, due to COVID, he wasn't able to come on site. And so I'll be talking about analysis of what is achievable. And once COVID travel restrictions are lifted, again, we'll travel to Wallops and hope perform the testing. And we'd be happy to share those results with you later on. Uh, DVBS2 is a CCSDS standard. It's highly power and bandwidth efficient. And for testing, the off-the-shelf receivers, transceivers, and the nearest network users are capable of generating a signal for testing. And so this diagram shows the test configuration. And by adding a variable attenuator for both X-band and K-band, again, was playing for plot to bit error rate performance. Here's a chart of what's theoretically achievable. In the X-band 375 megahertz channel, most missions today are under 300 megabits per second. But at 32 PSK, with the 9 tenths coding, Yen is showing that 1.3 gigabits is achievable. So we're looking forward to uh, demonstrating those really high data rates. And then for K-band, with a 1.5 gigahertz bandwidth is available for all the different sciences. Uh, this shows that 2.2 gigabits per second is achievable with 9 tenths code and 32 PSK modulation. The transceivers that NAN are currently using are limited to 500 mega samples per second. The vendor has plans to increase that to over a giga sample per second. And once that's done, once those higher sample rates are achieved, then the bit rates can go up to five megabits per second per channel for per polarization, left hand and right hand circular polarization, for a total of about 10 gigabits per second. And that's really exciting. Here's a chart which shows a link analysis of a typical CubeSat in low Earth orbit, about 600 kilometers above the Earth or a few hundred miles. A frequency of A250 in the X band, a modest power amplifier of two watts using the 11 meter ground station wallops, a 3 dB link margin, and a 24 dB antenna gain on the spacecraft for X band, which is achievable. And then with a 9 tenths code and 32 APSK, that spacecraft, that little cube set with just a two watt amplifier can achieve. 1.3 gigabits per second. And then a K band, a LEO spacecraft in a 26 gigahertz band, a five watt transmitter using an 11 meter station up in Alaska with a 3 dB link margin, 32 APSK antenna gain on the spacecraft for about 30 dB, 9 tenths code achieves 2.2 gigabits per second. So in conclusion, uh, these data rates are really exciting and they can help small spacecraft achieve particularly uh, constellations with limited number of ground stations or even more science return. In the paper, there's multiple flight radios for CubeSats and ground radios mentioned. The New York Network's always open to hear about more solutions, so feel free to contact me. And I hope that uh, you have all have learned something that you can apply to your future missions. So thank you. <laughs>